In the video that we just saw, we noticed that the, we, we're going to call that the period is one fourth of a second, and our amplitude is five inches. So we note that we pulled the bar all the way down to its to its you know, fully extended position. We call that negative five. Or as I was five. We'll call it negative five. Assuming that its equilibrium position is at zero, we brought it down five inches and we let it go. On its way up, we see that it's raising, raising, raising up into the equilibrium position. So we're going to start at zero, and then after one quarter of the uh, one quarter of our period. After a quarter of a quarter of a second, we're going to be back at zero. But if we want to simplify this, we get ourselves to one sixteenth of a second. Moving forward, we came up to our, our equilibrium position, came up five inches. So now we're at one half of one quarter of a second, otherwise known as, we'll make, we'll make it two out of sixteen, that's going to make our life easier. Two sixteenths of a second, and we're at our local max. And that's going to be at 5 inches. From there, we're at our local max, and it comes back down to its equilibrium position. And that's going to be at 3 sixteenths of a second. After we're at our equilibrium position, we're going to come on back down to our local minimum, which is going to be at the end of our period, which will be 1 16th. A second. We notice that if we are connect, if we are going to connect these dots, one fourth. One, what did I do? One. Yeah. Oh, oops. <laughs> Four sixteenths of a second. <clears throat> if we are to connect these dots, we know that this is a harmonic motion. So we're going to create this into a cosine graph or sinusoidal graph. We don't necessarily know it's cosine yet. And then from here, we can say, ah, well, what does this look like? That kind of looks like a cosine graph. So we're going to say that. Our displacement is modeled as negative 5 as our amplitude, cosine of, and then we're going to call it our period. So our period is 1 fourth of a second. So we can call this, we define a period to be 2 pi divided by our, uh, well, what's our other period? This is going to be our constant k. Okay. They call it B. They call it B? Okay, yes. we're going to call this B. B T. B T is defined as 2 pi over the period, which is 1 and 1 fourth, which is equal to 8 pi. So then we say B is equal to 8 pi. How and did you get it that it looks like a cosine graph? Ah. It looks more like a sine graph. Well, and that, and why, how come it's negative 5? That's a good question. There's so, two of them there. There's, yeah, there are. There are always two of them, and we know that that sine and cosine are good friends, and they're just a little and they're just a little phase shift off from each other. So we notice that we started at our we'll call it our local slash absolute minimum. We start there at at times equal to zero, and then come up to a local max, and then come back down to a minimum. Thinking back to our parent graphs, that you have cosine looks something like this. Can you actually draw in like a dotted line or a different yeah. color on the graph, on the actual graph? Can we you know what I mean? Okay, ready? All right. So, all right. So we have our graph, and then we can we contemplate to ourselves: is this a sine or is this a cosine, or is it a little bit of both? We know that cosine, which we're going to write in blue, looks something like this, starting at t is equal to zero, we achieve our local maximum. Continuing to one quarter of our period, we achieve zero. Continuing down, we achieve our local minimum at one half of our entire, of our entire period. period. Moving forward, we achieve zero again at three quarters of a period, and then continue on to achieve, again, our local max, completing one cycle or one period uh, at you know, our full period, which we could call 2 pi, we could call 4 pi over 16, 1 pi over 1 fourth seconds, that's totally chill. That sounds really weird. Uh, for also, we can say, oh, well, I know that sine of t is at 0 at 0, at zero and then continue. Why don't you on. talk about the negative first? Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's good. That's good. So, we can say, okay, well, this looks a lot like this graph. 
I know that if I introduce a negative sign, flipping over, I start at my negative, which is going to be the, the negative of my max will be my minimum in our case, right? Moving forward, we achieve zero. That's good. Normally, we're going down to our minimum. Now we're at our maximum. That's good. I'd like to see that. Continuing on, you see that the negative reflection across the x-axis will achieve our cosine graph. So from there, we can say that we'll call this f of t. We'll call it c of t for cosine. That sounds nice. c of t is equal to negative 5, which is our amplitude. Yep. Well, 5 is the amplitude. Yes. Amplitude. Right? Yes. And then the negative is because we need to reflect it over the x-axis. Totally correct. Of, and then we call, okay, well, first we have to decide what our B is going to be, right? Because we have B, T, or omega, T, or whatever we're going to call this today. We know that B is defined as 2 pi over my period, which is equal to 2 pi over 1 fourth, well, that's equal to 8 pi. Say again what you said about per period, what you were, how you were defining that. Oh, we define our period, okay, so we say that our b, which goes right here, is defined as 2 pi over a period. We know a period is how long it takes in order to complete one cycle from this, from our uh, video demonstration we saw, we claimed that it took us one fourth of, one fourth of a second to go from minimum up to maximum back down to minimum, so we call that our period, because it completes one cycle. With our period being 1 fourth, we take 2 pi over our period to achieve our b. And then we say, okay, 2 pi over 1 fourth, which will achieve 8 pi. So that means that this b we can replace with 8 pi. Lovely. Now, some may say, Nick, I think that this is a sinusoidal graph, and I would say that's totally chill, because you're right. It is a sinusoidal graph. Looking at the paragraph for sine of x, we see that starting at zero, we achieve our maximum at one quarter of the at one quarter of the period. Achieve another zero at one half of the period. Achieve our ooh, I want purple, Nick. Purple, purple. It's not showing up as color anyway. Oh, isn't? Oh, that's no. okay. <laughs> yeah, I, don't worry. Don't stress about that. We achieve our we achieve our uh, local maximum here at one quarter of a pi. Continue on to one half of a pi. We're back at our zero. Continuing down to three quarters of a uh, three quarters of a period, not pi. Three quarters of a period, we're at our local minimum, and then continuing into our local zero, we've completed one full revolution or one period. We note that we started at zero, hit a zero, and then hit another zero. That completes one cycle. Now, if I look at this, I see well. I don't have to worry about any negative reflections because I go up, I hit a peak, I come back down, I hit a trough, and then assuming this will continue on. I will come back to a resting position from here to here. Now what I have to invoke here is a phase shift. I don't have to worry about a, a vertical reflection across the x-axis. I have to worry about a phase shift left and right. I note that it originally I started at zero. Or for the sign graph, it originally starts at zero. Now it's starting at 1 16th of a second. I say, ah, well, Nick, this is going to be, we'll call this S of T for sine, is equal to now just 5, as that is my amplitude, and I don't have to worry about any negative reflections, sine of 8 pi t minus, because we're moving in the positive direction, right, in order to attain our, our zero, kind of a zero back, you have to put in a positive number to get a plus number to cancel out our minus number. We're going to do 1 16th to get us over to the right, 1 16th of a second. Now, we note that we're in our time domain right here, not really in our radian domain. If we wanted to bring this guy back to, to kind of call upon what we already know, cosine of, we'll call it t, is equal to sine of t, and then it's going to be minus pi over 2. Okay. Uh, in order to Mm -hmm. I see where you're going. So, so in order to call upon something that's very familiar to us, let's let's uh, let's factor out. I don't know, eight pi. Right? So we're gonna get five sine of eight pi t minus five, and we achieve what is known 
what, what our, we achieve our regularly known phase shift with a constant multiplier in front of them, which will bring us from the radian domain right here into the time domain.